Well, hello, kind folk. I'm Scott, back in the old curiosity shop. But it's not a kitchen counter thrift haul today. No, I am uh, preparing later in the week, hopefully by the weekend, to release the big Granny's Vanity Sale. And so I've got some lamps I need to work on. Now, many of you were with me when I purchased these at an antique shop. Actually, an antique mall. Oh... Two weeks ago, perhaps three, and it was the only thing I purchased that day. Now I was very excited when I found these dresser lamps, simply because I've never actually had a set of three that have survived together for their entire lives. These are going to date sometime, uh, I feel, before the Second World War. Now lamps like this similar to this remained popular through the 1960s but there are many stylistic changes and uh, these I do feel date sometime between 1930 to perhaps the early 40s and there's some clues here uh, that help us with that up on the little feet the use of the mirrors and I can also tell by uh, the electrical cords in the sockets that were a little earlier than the 1950s. But what's nice is we have the two vanity lamps here, which are going to go on the woman's dresser. Typically that's where they would be found. And then we have a third matching lamp, which is taller and goes with the set. Now this one of course could be used on the bedside table and in many cases in those days there would be two single beds with a nightstand in the middle. That's where this could have been used. It could have also been used on a writing desk or some other small occasional table in the in the bedroom. All right first thing I did was cut off the old electrical cords now, I don't think anybody needs to be told. <laughs> when you see an electrical cord like this, you don't want to plug that in. This is the classic way lamps were uh, wired in the 1920s and 30s. Uh, after the war, this silk covered cord is basically history. But we can see how fine it is covered in silk the way they were in the old Bakelite plug. And, um, so this came, this comes off, this came off right away. Now I did save, uh, and I always save the, the Art Deco plugs. These had been rewired at some point uh, in their history, the two smaller lamps, but the larger lamp retained its old original cord. I do save these plugs and sometimes I save the old wire because I can still use this sometimes in old radio and uh, in some antique repairs if I'm not actually using it as uh, electrical cord. Now what I'm going to do today is just rewire one of the lamps and then we'll be back at the end of the week with all three of them all set. So what I'm going to do is completely take one of the smaller lamps apart I suppose. The socket is just fine. I don't anticipate that there's any problem there. They do go bad occasionally, mechanically. This one sounds good. It clicks just fine as, as we would expect it to. And then I will pull it all apart, clean it. Now this is glass. And then we have these separators here. When you get uh, to the post-war era, these separators often become plastic and are sprayed, spray-painted. But these are metal. I'm going to be cleaning the oxidation off of these. I'm not going to spray-paint these and change them. 
I'm pretty conservative when I uh, do restoration. Some folks would actually go ahead and spray paint these, but I'm not going to do that. The uh, glass should be okay once I clean that up. And you can see there. And then I'll be using uh, some wire to redo these. Now, sometimes with lamps, I will put the reproduction cloth cord on. There's a wonderful shop up in Manhattan, Lower Manhattan, that I go up to. Oh, it's on 8th Avenue, just above uh, 32nd Street. I guess it's probably somewhere on 37th or 38th, if you're familiar with the old New Yorker Hotel. It's just a few blocks north. And it's always fun to have breakfast at the TikTok Diner before I go up and get my electrical cord. It's been a while since I've done that. You can also order it through the mail. But if I were to use it, it would drive up the cost of these because the old, uh, the reproduction silk cord is not cheap. And normally with dresser lamps, what's going to happen? They sit on a vanity, the cord goes down the back of the dresser into the wall and you never really see the electrical cord so it doesn't really make a huge difference and so I'm just going to be using uh, some modern modern wire here which is going to be just fine keep the cost the, the resale cost down on these when I go to put them up for sale all right so uh, I've got over here a subscriber gave me this wonderful tea towel with the roosters on it and I've got my tools laid out I'm not going to need all of these but here are the wire cutters some needle nose pliers various screwdrivers and then I also have an SOS pad here which is starting to rust a little bit because I've already used it once I'm going to use that. I could also use a steel wool to clean the metal parts and I may actually go to a steel wool which is a little bit finer than using an SOS pad. But I'll show you how I'm going to do all of that. So let me get the camera installed in its little cradle thing here and I'll get started. Now one of the things I've learned the hard way, when you take apart one of these lamps with intricate pieces, uh, it's important to uh, put them down on the counter in the order in which they are stacked. Uh, because you'll forget. It's not so bad because we've got another one over here in case I don't remember, but I'm still going to place things down and take them off of this rod exactly the way they were originally placed on there. So let's have a, a little closer look the way these are put together. Here's the first metal spacer and the second. These uh, look like they're nickel plated, chrome plated rather, and these will clean up very easily. These on the other hand have that surface rust. Really it's just oxidation and those are the ones I'm going to be scrubbing clean with the SOS with the steel wool but probably not spray painting. There's one piece of glass, another spacer with lots of old dirt in it. So you can see lots of pieces here. That one got sort of stuck to the top. All right, we'll pull this glass out. It's all glass, as you can see. 
then we'll keep going here. I can't wait to count how many pieces I take off of this lamp. Oh my goodness. You know, I've always enjoyed working with my hands. Uh, it's something that brings me a lot of enjoyment. And it's a great pleasure to work on a project from start to finish. Getting a lot of old dirt here, dirt and dust. Ooh, that's what happens. Sometimes you find mouse poop and things. That's always fun too. All right, we're down at the bottom. Now we'll pull the rod out. And there's quite a bit of uh, rust. That's usually a sign that these were in a basement. Attics are usually dry. Basements are usually damp. And so these probably spent their retirement in someone's basement. Now here's the mirrored glass, which is going to be reflecting in your eyes, I know. That'll clean off nicely. All right, now let me rinse my hands. And let's see exactly how many pieces we've got here. Okay. <clears throat> I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen separate pieces. You weren't expecting that, were you? Nineteen pieces, including the wonderful old socket. All right. Now let's just clean it up, wire it up, put it back together. Whenever I'm working in the sink with glass, I always put a towel down, normally larger than uh, this little yellow washcloth, just in case I drop anything in, into the uh, sink and lose it. Now you want to be careful when you, when you wash mirrored glass. Uh, this piece right here has some red felt on it, and I'm going to leave that just the way that it is. But I'm just gently going to rinse this off. I really probably don't even need to do that. But I'm going to do it anyway. Just use my hand very quickly to get that dirt off. And then I'll clean the rest of it with glass cleaner and a paper towel. So that's really all I'm going to do to that. Just get the old dirt and dust off of it. Now it's time to clean some of the pieces that are rusted. So. I'm going to get my steel wool nice and wet here. All right, there's the rusted piece, as you can see. And I'm going to just take my steel wool pad and show you that we're going to be able to do a pretty nice job with this. It will not look like it was when it was new. I don't want it to look it look like it was when it was new. The easy uh, cheapskate way, I think, would be to put all these on a piece of newspaper and spray paint them. Now, in my opinion, and that's just my little old opinion, that would look horrible. You'd have bright paint the surface would be gaudy in my opinion and it wouldn't match the rest of the the lamp pieces. Uh, the surface would just be too new and show no age at all. So all I care about doing is getting the rust off of this. Now I am modifying what I'm doing slightly for the camera. Normally I wouldn't be holding it like this. I would have it uh, down flat which would make it a little bit easier on my fingers but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So again, just that surface rust. Give it a rinse. Now, you say, well, Scott, that doesn't look that great. It looks fantastic. I'm not concerned about this rust that's that can be seen 
in this inner diameter simply because you won't see it when the lamp is put back together again. Okay, there you go. That's all I'm going to do to it. I'm not going to spray paint this. Let's compare it to, let's see, one of its rusty friends here. There we go. Okay, see, that's the old rusty one, or oxidized one anyway. And then this is the one that I've cleaned off. Very simple. Very simple indeed. No need to spray paint this. It's going to look better this way. All right, I'll keep going. Okay, here are all of my parts all washed up. Now, I'm not worried about this rod. We can leave the rust on there because you don't see that at all. Uh, it's completely hidden inside the lamp. And uh, you'll see rust on this side because, and I didn't clean it, this piece will be uh, only seen from the bottom. So the edges are all I'm worried about. You'll see when I get it put back together again. So those are all the pieces. <laughs> oh yes, I have totally taken lamps apart without a, a, a second example and, and forgotten how to put all of these pieces back together again. It can be a lot of fun. And so uh, I'm going to clean up the socket just a little bit take this cord out and rewire it. I may not show you the rewiring process because I've shown you that before in other videos, how to make sure you're wiring a lamp correctly. I'm not gonna do that on these. We'll just see the finished product. All right, let me dry everything off and keep working. Now, pulling apart these old sockets can sometimes be tricky, uh, but if you look very closely, you will usually see the word press p-r-e-s-s -S. and i'm hoping that you'll be able to see it right there you probably can't uh, so that means to put your thumb there press and you should be able to twist the bottom right off now as i said they can be they can be tricky and sometimes they need a little encouragement. We're going to encourage this one here. I'm going to be very careful at this because I do not want to damage the casing. We're saving this socket and reusing it. Oh, it makes me mad when I see old lamps with brand new shiny brass sockets. People run out to the hardware store and they buy something brand new and it looks hideous. Hideous, hideous. All right, I'm really struggling with this, but this is the way it is. Sometimes they will just, now I know I'm off camera here. Oh, come on, there we go, okay. Did you hear that? Get out, get off, get off, there it is. Now this is one of the ones that was rewired at some point with a uh, rubber cord. So that comes right out. You can see what color this uh, uh, casing of the socket was originally. A much brighter nickel or chrome color. All right, the cardboard insulator. We're going to save that. We need it. If uh, you just want to look and see it. Well, this one doesn't want to. Oh, come on. Of course. Mm. Ouch. All right, there we go. Uh, sometimes with these cardboard insulators, you'll see that they're burnt around the top. That's because someone has used probably a light bulb uh, that was maybe too bright, uh, or it was just used for many, many years, and the cardboard will actually burn. I've seen that in many cases. So there we are. And we can see that socket is going to work just fine. Now remember, 
we have the hot and the cold, right? You've got the brass and the silver. So uh, if you're using a polarized plug, you want to wire it correctly. Correctly. And this person, when this was originally done, there was no underwriter's knot. Not a big deal on a dresser lamp unless you've got little children that you think are going to run around and be twirling lamps by their electrical cords. But technically, you, you should have an underwriter's knot uh, on the inside, but we don't have that here. Let's just take this off. Well, I guess I could use a, oops, a screwdriver a little bit bigger than that one. Okay, that one is messed up. Try this one. One. Okay, there we go. Well, we don't need this, but this is just fine. Now I'm just going to clean off the surface of this very lightly uh, just to get that outer coating of uh, old nicotine and surface oxidation off of there. Just clean it up a little bit. I'll be right back. Okay, I would like you to see, can you see how I've cleaned this very gently? Did not over clean it at all. Uh, I, I haven't cleaned the bottom yet because I want you to see the difference. I hope it shows up on camera. Um, this one is all cleaned. And this one still has the dirty old surface on it. And this is the one that hasn't been restored at all yet. So it just cleans it up a little bit. I didn't polish the heck off of it, right? I want character. Listen, if I wanted this to look brand new, I would take a can of spray paint to it and ruin it. So, all right, now we do not want to put this together. <laughs> until this is completely dry and this is still wet on the inside. We need to dry this off. Let's do that.
side by side. Now I know in this bright light you probably can't see much of a difference between the two, but let me finish it and then we'll take a closer look. Uh, this one's back together again and this is the one that hasn't been cleaned yet. Now <clears throat> it's not screwed tightly together yet because what's going to hold it all together are the threads in the bottom of the socket. By the way, I forgot to tell you, before you clean the bottom of your socket, take out the cardboard insulation. We don't want that soaking up any water. There we go. Now, what I'm going to be able to do very carefully is turn this bad boy on its side and get fingerprints all over the glass, but that's okay. Now, very carefully, we're going to thread, screw the uh, bottom of the socket into the rod and until it just begins to tighten. Okay, now I'm going to center everything. I'm going to make sure that all the components here are uh, where they're supposed to be. That looks all right. Probably not going to be perfect, but all right, not bad. Now, when I tighten this, um, I never really did bother to pull that all the way off because it was rusted in place, so I'm just leaving it there. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and turn the screw and feel the tension just to where I feel it's tight enough, but I don't want to screw too hard, too tightly, because we'll crack this glass on the bottom. And then we're up the creek without a paddle, as they used to say in Cub Scouts. All right, that's about as tight as, uh, that feels fine. That's good. Okay, and now we can see that it's back together again and looking pretty good. Okay, now uh, here's the original, or here's the one that still needs to be cleaned, and this is the one that I've cleaned. All right, let's get the socket on, put a light bulb in here and a shade, and after that I only have two more to go. Now, I guess I will go ahead and point out, because it is important, uh, I'm using uh, polarized plugs. Yeah, and so I want to wire this correctly, and so the smooth is, uh, is the hot, which goes to the brass terminal. So this is the brass terminal here, and this piece of wire here is smooth, so that's the hot, yeah? And then this side has the ribs on it, so that's the neutral, and that goes to the silver. And so when the lamp is uh, turned off, to electrocute yourself, you got to stick your finger in the socket. If I had it wired the wrong way, when the lamp is turned off, this, this outer metal would be hot. And if by chance you were screwing in a light bulb or taking a light bulb out, uh, and and touch this you you could get a shock from it because this would be this would be hot hot meaning full of electric okay and i did not tie an underwrite underwriter's knot some of you are going to get mad at me for that but i didn't do it all right okay so now we'll pull this through and one of my favorite things is coming up 
which is kind of funny. All right, let's take the cardboard insulator. I hope I'm in, in camera, in frame rather. On goes the insulator, cardboard insulation. There we go. Now our cap. And here's a sound I love. I call it that reassuring snap. And that's when you know this is in place as it should be. Let's see if we can hear the little snap you're going to get. You ready? Everybody listening? All right, let's listen. Well, there it is, good friends. What do you think? Hold on, let's turn it off. So you can see. Oh, you can't see anything. Hold on. Boy, I'm really screwing up this grand reveal, aren't I? I certainly am. Well, there she is. I have a beautiful old shade similar to what might be on it. We're all back together again. All nice and clean, as you can see. Beautiful. Compared to her dirty cousin over here, still in need of restoration. So I hope you can see not a great deal of change in the metal. This has just a, a nice old look to it as opposed to the rust. But I think that looks way better than taking a can of spray paint to it. What say you? Mm-hmm. All right, let's turn it on. Wonderful. I'm pleased. You know, a job that's worth doing is worth doing right. Is that the expression? I might have said that wrong. It's elegant. In a simple way, and these were not expensive lamps when they were new. They were probably bought very cheaply in a small department store. It's just glass and metal and mirrors. But folks didn't have a lot to spend in the 1930s as we know, and this certainly brought some elegance to the boudoir. All right, well, that took me about an hour. It might have taken a little bit less if I weren't monkeying with the camera, but that's okay. I'm gonna work on the other two lamps and get them in good shape, just like the one in the middle, and then they'll be all set. Well, everyone, I hope you find favor with my little restoration work here. Don't be afraid to tackle a job like this. I paid $25 for these three lamps. And when they're all shined up and finished, they're gonna look like a million bucks. All right, folks, that's it. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.